takes place in the leaf within the cell in organelles called chloroplasts. Inside the chloroplasts, the photosynthetic pigments are arranged in sacs called thylakoids. The thylakoids are arranged in sacs called grana, and the space between the grana is called the stroma. Ma'am, how does this process provide food for plants? That's a very good question, Alfonso. In photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water are converted into a simple sugar called glucose using light energy. Thus, in photosynthesis, the raw materials are carbon dioxide and water. The product is a simple sugar called glucose. Oxygen and water are released as byproducts. Thus, the overall equation for photosynthesis is six molecules of carbon dioxide plus 12 molecules of water in the presence of light energy is converted into one molecule of glucose and six molecules of oxygen as well as six molecules of water are given off as byproducts. Take note that this is already the overall result of a very complicated process which we will attempt to simplify. Photosynthesis involves two phases, light-dependent reaction and the dark reaction. Let me explain to you the light-dependent reaction. Hmm, let me guess. As the name suggests, light is required for these reactions to take place. Very good, Lorenzo. Light supplies the energy for this reaction to occur. The light reaction of photosynthesis takes place in the grana where there is abundance of light energy. The chlorophyll is composed of two units, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. When a photosystem 1 chlorophyll absorbs light, its electrons get excited and are released. These electrons are passed through an electron transport chain to convert NADP or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate to NADPH2, a high energy molecule. This photosystem 2 chlorophylls replenish these electrons by the following process. When a photosystem 2 chlorophyll absorbs light, it breaks down water to oxygen, hydrogen ions, and electrons. These electrons are passed through an electron transport chain to make adenosine triphosphate or ATP, another high energy molecule. Finally, these electrons are passed on to the electron deficient photosystem 1 chlorophyll to enable it to function again, and the cycle goes on. So one cycle uses up one water molecule, one photosystem generates NADPH, the other ATP. Very good! These two high-energy molecules are used to power up the next process of photosynthesis, which is the dark reaction. The dark reactions take place in the stroma. There, carbon dioxide, an inorganic compound, is used to form glucose, an organic compound. This process is called carbon fixation, which occurs by a series of enzyme-controlled reactions called the Calvin cycle. Six carbon dioxide molecules react with six ribulous phosphate molecules to form 12 phosphoglyceric acid molecules, which is further converted into phosphoglyceraldehyde by using up 12 ATPs and 12 NADPH2 from the light reactions. Two of these phosphoglyceraldehyde molecules form one molecule of glucose, the other 10 are used to replenish six ribulous phosphate molecules to react with carbon dioxide again. I noticed that both the light and dark reactions happen in cycles to ensure the continuity of the photosynthetic process. Also, as a summary, the dark reactions use up to six molecules of carbon dioxide to form one molecule of glucose. If this process uses up 12 molecules each of NADPH and ADP, then it must mean that 12 light reaction cycles or 12 water molecules are required for every Calvin cycle. Very good, students! In our general equation, there are six water molecules in the product. Where does this come from? Remember that one cycle in photosystem one of the light reactions produced a hydrogen ion. In 12 cycles, 12 of these react with oxygen to form six molecules of water. Notice that all these reactions eventually sum up to form our general equation. For every one molecule of glucose and six molecules of water formed, 
6 molecules of carbon dioxide and 12 molecules of water are required. Mm, Ma'am, water appears both as a reactant and product in our equation. Why can't we just cancel them out and write 6 water molecules as reactants? If we do that, our equation will still be balanced. However, this will falsely imply that we only use 6 molecules of water in one full cycle of photosynthesis. You are aware that we need 12 molecules of water for one cycle of photosynthesis to happen. That's why we cannot cancel this out. Who would have thought that such intricate process could take place in a small leaf and in such short time? The glucose that these plants produce provides them with energy for maintenance and growth. And don't forget, these are the same leaves that provide food for animals, humans, and practically the whole ecosystem. See how a little leaf can make such a big difference? That's why we have to protect our forest and plant more trees. Without plants to carry out photosynthesis, we can never manufacture food on our own.